Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Monday morning, a chilly Monday morning here in central Wisconsin, around the mid-20s, and the high today doesn't get out of the 30s. And so we are thankful that you're joining us on our Monday morning Facebook Live devotions at 9 a.m. It's a blessing to be able to do this Monday through Friday for us as a body of believers to be in the Word of God each and every day and to be able to do that together. And so we are going through the book of Psalms and go ahead and turn and open up your Bibles to Psalm 57. Psalm 57. This is a Psalm from King David and where we pick up from Friday, Psalm 56, we remember King David is a fugitive and he is hiding from King Saul. And so Psalm 57 is going to pick up from that same theme and that context. The only difference is in Psalm 57, David is hiding from inside a cave. Have you ever been inside a cave? How cool it is, how dark it is, and also what a great hiding place that it would be. Doing my vicarage in Hannibal, Missouri, I was able to tour the Mark Twain caves. And so some of those stories growing up about Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer and Becky, um, I was able to experience the tour there of Mark Twain Caves. And then in Missouri, there's the Merrimack Caverns, but uh, have you ever been in a cave? And if you've been in a cave, you know what that experience is like, and that will help you kind of uh, experience what David was experiencing today. So Psalm 57, and so we read there before we get started, to the choir master according to to do not destroy. And so to the choir master, David writes this psalm. And so many theologians believe that choir master is the one who leads worship there in the temple from the Levites. Some believe that the choir master that David is writing to is God himself, the one who created music and gives the gift of music. And for some, they believe it's to both. And so to the choir master, this is to be used in worship. This is used to be sung and sung to do not destroy. We see this theme of do not destroy in Psalm 57, 58, and 59, and also again in Psalm 75. And theologians look at Isaiah 65, 8, that this was a theme, and this is a saying that people would say in Israel, do not destroy. And what we also see is that David, from this cave in 1 Samuel chapter 26, is hiding from King Saul, as Saul is trying to take David out. And then we continue there. It says, a mictum. And so this is a golden psalm from King David. And golden, this psalm is of great value. And this psalm is of great value because it speaks to the, the hurting hearts of those who feel alone, uh, depressed, for those who feel like the world is out to get them, like they're being attacked from enemies, to where they have nowhere else to turn but to God and to God alone. And that's what we see from David today. When he fled from Saul in the cave, and so we're from the Bat Cave uh, today, that uh, when I toured uh, the Mark Twain Caves uh, with then, it was my fiance, now my wife Candace, uh, as we were going through that tour, a bat flew right at her to where then she leaned up against me until the bat went by. And so, <laughs> From the bat cave today is where David is hiding from King Saul. Psalm 57, verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. Notice, anytime there's repetition in the scripture, it is meant to emphasize the feelings and how raw and vulnerable the person is, or it's being emphasized so that we don't miss it. And so it's being highlighted. Here, what's being highlighted and repeated, David is saying is, be merciful to me, be merciful to me. He knows mercy is a gift from God. It's not coming from the person who deserves it or has done something to achieve it, but mercy is all dependent on who God is, and he's the giver of mercy. And he knows that he and his life is at the mercy in the hands of the Lord. 
here as he is hiding from King Saul in the cave. And so he's praying for God's mercy to be showered upon him and to be there with him and to be present with him as he's alone in this cave until this threat passes by. And so we see the heart of David as he's taking refuge in the Lord. And as he takes refuge in the Lord, what we see here is this imagery many times in the Old Testament, and that's in the shadow of your wings, like a mother bird lays out her feathers and protects the baby birds. Here we see that same protection, that the Lord protects his children with his wings. And when he covers us, we know that we are protected by the one who reigns supreme. And that's what David's talking about here, that in the cave, he's found God's mercy, God's protection, and he's praying that that continues until this destruction passes by. Verse 2, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. A great verse to highlight here in verse 2, that when we are alone, when we're feeling attacked by enemies, when we feel like we are alone in the cave and that it's dark and it's cool and that uh, the evil one is trying to attack us, we cry out to God the Most High that he reigns over the enemy and the enemy does not win, and that Jesus has defeated sin, death, and the devil, and gives us this victory. And so God is the Most High. To God who fulfills His purpose for me. God has a plan and a purpose for our life. And what I love in the book of Acts, it says that David fulfilled all of God's purposes for him and his generation. And so what God created David to do, he did. And that is a great calling for us as followers of Jesus, that God has a purpose for us to glorify Him, to honor Him, to be a witness for Him, and to share the truth and the gospel with others, and that our life is a witness before this non-believing world. And so that God has a purpose for us, whether that's being a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a friend, whether that is in no matter what vocation God has called us to be a light in those places, but in our family, in our relationships, in our community, God has put you in a divine appointment and assignment for His purpose, to glorify Him. And David realizes that. Verse 3, He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. Selah. Selah means pause. A pause for reflection. A pause also in singing this song. And he pauses there because it is a cry to the Lord for heaven to save him, God the Most High, and to put to shame his enemies who are trying to trample him, that the battle belongs to the Lord and that the victory is the Lord. And after the pause, look at the deep reflection from David here. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness, even alone in the cave, when it looks like the enemy is going to win and King Saul is going to destroy the life of David, David knows that the Lord reigns supreme, that the victory is the Lord, and that the Lord will save him because of his love that is steadfast, his mercy that is great, and that God is faithful. Verse 4, My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts, the children of man, whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. So David talks about the enemy and how strong the enemy is here. And remember, David is a warrior. And as he is a warrior, he will use military-like analogies and examples. And he uses that here with the fiery beast, the children of man, whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. And so what the enemy is trying to do is trying to take him down. And he says, my soul is in the midst of lions. Lions are powerful beings. Even in 1 Peter chapter 5, it talks about the enemy. The devil is like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour as he seeks to kill and to destroy. And so David is admitting that his enemies are powerful, that they're great in numbers, and that they have incredible weapons at their arsenal to take him down. And so the threat is very real. 
Then he goes on to say in verse 5, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So even when it looked like the odds were not in David's favor, he continues from the cave to worship God and to look up. We can only imagine him maybe going to the mouth of the cave and looking up whether in the daytime to the blue sky or the nighttime to the dark sky. And that even though he's at the lowest of lows, God is still at the highest of highs. And David never forgets that in his relationship with the Lord. And that his God who reigns high from the most high heavens, even from the cave, still rules and reigns supreme. And even then, David is still exalting God. Verse 6, They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. They plan, they plot to take me down to destroy me. They want to take me down in the pit. And so they're trying to set up traps for me, David is saying, but their traps are going to backfire because God is going to give the victory. And the traps that they're using to try to seek and destroy me is really going to destroy them because they are not doing godly things and they are not following the will of the Lord. Verse 7, My heart is steadfast, O God, not given up. My heart is steadfast. He repeats it. He's not going to give up. He's not going to quit because of his relationship with the Lord and the victory that he knows that he has in God. And even then, he's going to worship from the cave. Look what he says. I will sing and make melody. Awake my glory. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. And so he worships the Lord and praises the Lord and is singing hymns and liturgy and these psalms that are heavy on his heart. And as he is feeling them, when his life is on the line. And so in hiding, he is worshiping the Lord and giving praise. Verse 9, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. What an incredible witness that even when David is alone and his enemies are surrounding him and he's a fugitive hiding in a cave, that he continues to look to the Lord, not just for protection and deliverance, but also looks to the Lord in a loving relationship, that he knows the Lord is steadfast and that David is going to be steadfast. That he's not going to quit. He's not going to give up. And he worship and he praises. And the lower he gets, the bigger God gets in his view as he becomes dependent on God. And isn't that true in so many times in our life that when we're going through difficult times, trials, tribulations, when we feel like we've hit rock bottom, when we feel like it's dark and that we're all alone, that we turn to the Lord. And that when we need him the most, God is at his best because he is merciful, because he's loving, because he's compassionate, and because he's steadfast, and because he gives us the victory. The victory through Jesus, the one who went to the cross for you and for me. His enemies thought that they had won, that they had defeated him and that he was crucified, but his enemies lost because three days later he would raise himself from the grave and he would give us victory over sin, death, and the evil one. And so today, from the cave, we look up and we praise and we worship the Lord and we hold him to a high esteem that he is exalted over all of the world and that our life is in his faithful, capable hands as we go out to fulfill God's purposes and plans for our life to glorify and honor him. As we pray today, we pray with some heavy hearts here in our community. Uh, for our high school across the street, they have lost the lives of two young ones here in this past week who have taken their lives. And so we're going to pray for God to put just a hedge of protection around our school and to be with our students and teachers and administration and for the victory of Jesus in the midst of these difficult times uh, to reign and to keep the evil one away. Also, too, we're going to pray for Kenosha, Wisconsin, as the trial comes to an end, and we will pray that 
No matter what the result, it's in God's hands, and we pray for peace. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful that you love us, that you deliver us, that you protect us, and that you put your arms around us and comfort us with your feathers and with your wings. And Lord, we pray for everyone who feels that they are alone, that they are in a dark place. And as they feel that, Lord, those feelings are real. But what's more real is your presence. And so we pray that you would comfort them, that you would wrap your loving arms around them, that they would know that they are not alone, that no one walks alone or fights alone because you have came down to earth and that you have went to a cross for each and every one of your children and that you give us victory in that relationship. Lord, we pray for D.C. Everest High School. We pray for the families and for the students, for the teachers, the administration, and for our community that grieves the loss of the life of the two high school students. Lord, we pray that your mercy and your compassion would fulfill this community in our hearts and our souls. Help each student to see their life and their value, that they are your masterpiece, that you have a plan and a purpose for their life. Keep the evil one from us and deliver us from evil. Put a hedge of protection around our schools, around our students, and around our church and our community. And Lord, we pray for Kenosha. We pray for everything that takes place in that trial, that your good and gracious will will be done, and that you will give peace in the midst of this situation as we pray for all the hearts and for all the people and families who are involved. Lord, as we go out this day, even when it looks gloomy, that we know that you give us victory and that we worship and we praise you, that our relationship with you goes far and beyond all of our circumstances. Lord, may you be exalted today and may your people go out to share your love, your light, and your truth as we continue to fulfill your purposes for us and for your church. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a blessed day, church, as we go out to not just be the church, but to continue to live for Jesus and to take Jesus into the streets today. Amen.